Hi, this is Zach Mir with the Major Markets Review here on Share Talk. It's Thursday, the 25th of March. Hasn't been one for a few days, and uh, I think we probably need one uh, with the way the markets are looking at the moment, especially on the indices. A bit of uh, end of tax year uh, jiggery pokery. Uh, we've got a support line here on the FTSE from back in November. Uh, we've got the 50 day moving average around 66.30 as well. So that seems to be the key. Uh, zone at the moment so far there's been a bit of a bounce off that area and ideally there isn't any break back below that below that we would go down to the 65 30 area which is that uh, I suppose neckline uh, support of the post november rally and uh, in order to break the recent uh, slip uh, that this market's had from uh, january you want to see this through that uh, resistance line there 6750 bit of a mystery that we didn't actually well we weren't able to clear 6800 and uh, we just had a little bull trap through the february peak 67.93 before coming back but uh, everything here hinging on uh, 66.30 holding i suppose uh, given what's happened in the recent past end of month uh, set, tends to see a sell-off so the last couple of days uh, at least uh, testing the line there in november uh, also in um, at the end of january and also at the end of last month so if uh, history repeats itself we would have a probe down towards quick probe towards 65.30 and then we'd rally again uh, but if you don't want to play those sorts of games, you don't want to try and buy the dip, you wait for 67.50 to break and then target, I suppose at the moment, best case scenario target here, up to 7200, which is that June 2020 resistance line projection. So uh, that should be a reasonable map for people to grapple with at the moment. On to the DAX, and uh, DAX, I suppose, putting um, the FTSE to shame at the moment. Uh, the reason for saying that is that uh, we broke the equivalent of 6800 for this market which was 14,200 we just kept on uh, uh, rallying today we've had an intraday dip but uh, it seems to bounce back with a quite a strong hammer candle actually the way it looks so uh, all we're looking to do now is break yesterday's uh, peak around uh, the uh, 14,620 area today's peak as well I suppose uh, that sort of area on an end of day close basis or even today if we're really lucky and that would set off this market on a new leg to the upside uh, that would be as high as uh, 15,600 uh, for the end of next month but uh, uh, at the moment uh, obviously a bad day and a rather sharp dip uh, so probably people are not really in the mood for looking skyward but 14,620 seems to be the trigger point as far as the downside is concerned uh, clearly the old resistance 14,100 uh, if uh, we can't maintain 14,400 that was the area of today's support on to the US market starting off with the Dow and uh, the Dow, I suppose, more in the uh, the type of uh, uh, situation that the DAX is rather than the FTSE. And here, actually, interestingly enough, we've had the bounce, a similar bounce to the one we've seen at uh, uh, at the DAX. And uh, funnily enough, the uh, old resistance from February at uh, thirteen, uh, what thirty-two thousand there today. The support so far thirty-two thousand and seventy-one. So old resistance becoming new support. In fact, we haven't actually probed that low to test it as new support so that is actually a plus point there uh, if you're looking for the new trigger i suppose uh, the earlier resistance of the week around 32,800 uh, would be the level the momentum level to break as we try and target the top of the rising trend channel from september up to 34,000, and obviously that would be new record highs but at the moment i suppose when most of us are not really feeling in the mood to uh, look higher we're looking lower uh, in terms of possible support apart from 32,000. Uh, the next level down would be the 50-day moving average, 31,500, which is also an uptrend line from the early part of last year. Moving on to the S&P, and uh, here you can see that, uh, oh, you will be able to see if I can get the right chart up, you'll be able to see that uh, this market, uh, I suppose it's been uh, looking like a rising wedge situation, but uh, the support line uh, holding so far, I suppose that would be better drawn. Uh, than the way I've, uh, the old line that I've got there on the chart, probably better drawn as something uh, like uh, this, and uh, allowing us, I suppose, down towards the 3,800 level uh, as support. But so far, we've actually had a bear trap rebound from below the 50-day moving average, 3,868. And uh, while we're above that on an end of day close basis, another chance at 4,000 plus uh, could be on its way, I suppose, over the next couple of weeks at the current rate of progression. RSI here just around the 50 level so we haven't we're still a sort of uh, half full rather than half empty on a technical basis for the S&P. Nasdaq was always the problem child even more than the uh, FTSE 100 of late and uh, here I suppose the jury's still out as to whether we can uh, maintain the stellar run that this market's had 
got a support line there, an obvious one there from July last year. Uh, that's currently standing around 12,400, so we're well above that. Uh, it'd be nice to see if this market could break back above the old uh, low, I suppose, from last week, 12,704, on an end of day close basis. If we can stay above that on an end of day close basis, uh, then a return to at least the 50 day moving average area at uh, 13,200 uh, would be on the cards over the next week or two. Uh, away from the indices and we're on to the currencies first cable and uh, uh, here you can see that uh, it's been uh, I suppose a reasonably predictable uh, break back below the 50-day moving average and below uh, that uptrend line that we had there from back in September so broke the rising trend channel uh, support from the beginning of February at uh, 135.66 so below the 50-day moving average at around 138.18 135.66 looks to be uh, the risk that uh, the bulls will have to take. I suppose the proviso here is that uh, we've got uh, this market, I suppose it's currently in uh, the, within the region of former uh, January resistance. Uh, so that will provide support and also the 200 day moving average is long way down. Uh, seems to be too, rising too sharply really to allow too much of a fall for this market. So 135.66 currently, I suppose the worst case scenario one would expect for the pound at the moment. Uh, through the 50-day line, it's back to 140, which I suppose, I suppose seems to be a reasonable uh, uh, attitude to take in terms of what the trajectory might be if we snap the recent uh, weakness of this market. Here for the uh, euro dollar, a, a, a bit of a surprise here. We're actually below the 200-day moving average and below the initial March support there. That was at 118.35. While there's no end of day close back uh, above 118.35, the next uh, level down to look at I suppose is the uh, uh, that mid-November floor there at uh, 117.45. Uh, this has to be a market which is not looking good at all. I suppose that you'd really be looking for the area around 116, which was uh, September and November support as the next level down uh, while there's no quick or if there's no quick break back above the 200-day uh, line at 118.51. So uh, euro dollar certainly not looking uh, very good and presumably the vaccine woes of that era not help that area rather not helping at all at the moment on to gold which hasn't been itself i suppose over the recent months or over the course of the pandemic you could probably blame that on um, the rise and rise of bitcoin uh, current situation is that we basically found uh, resistance uh, just uh, below uh, the old support there from the end of november that was 1764 the peak so far this month has been up to 1755 so not a good look uh, when you fail uh, below former support uh, and the view is that at least while we remain well below 1750 we have a chance of a retest of the uh, 1680 area which was the initial march support so uh, in a way also this market tracking uh, what we're seeing at euro dollar which tends to happen uh, quite a lot uh, that correlation normally quite strong although Obviously, these days, correlations uh, don't tend to work uh, very well at all. On to crude oil, and uh, despite uh, certain distractions that we have at the moment in the uh, uh, in the Suez and in the Middle East, uh, with ships going AWOL uh, or astray, uh, here we've got uh, crude oil now, uh, the battleground, certainly around the 50-day moving average at $58.70. We don't really want to break uh, back below the uh, 56 uh, 50 area that's a recent support so while we're above that i suppose it is a buy the dip if you're cautious you want to see an end of day close through 61 dollars which is that uh, march resistance line uh, if we break, break 56.40 i suppose the next level down would be former january resistance in the 53 dollar 80 area but disappointing i suppose uh, difficult to say anything other than that in terms of the way this market has moved over the recent past there is a line there of support um, from november and ideally that'll kick in uh, that 58 58 uh, 50 area will kick in uh, to then allow this market to resume its uptrend after all the 50 day line there is currently still rising so that will be providing some positive uplift to this market uh, finishing off uh, with um, bitcoin which is uh, the way that we normally do it and uh, let's just get a chart up the, uh, for this now here we've got uh, Bitcoin versus the dollar and what's interesting now is that we're right on the line here in terms of the uh, rising trend channel that we've had in place on the daily chart since uh, October. We're also right on the 50-day moving average as well, they call that 50,400. 
we don't want to see an end of day close back below that so far there's been a bit of support coming in there in that uh, just above the 50,000 area I suppose that ties in with the uh, 50,000 peaks that we had at the beginning of March but uh, really don't want to see an end of day close back below uh, 50,000 uh, for many reasons uh, if you are cautious I suppose the minimum in terms of uh, having a buy trigger here would be a break back above uh, the neckline support there the broken neckline support there at 53,220 uh, that would give us the first ch uh, sign that we're re re back in recovery mode and able to zigzag back up uh, that rising trend channel otherwise uh, a rather more a conservative uh, trigger would be 57,600 in that March resistance line projection but at the moment all about this um, 50,000 zone uh, the fact that the RSI is now well below 50 at 45 is not a plus point and that would tend to drag this market lower so not looking great on Bitcoin at the moment but uh, nothing broken yet so uh, uh, it would probably pay not to be too bearish just yet that's it for me today more updates later in the week